Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote-unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game. So just tell your friends, magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, on this week's Soul Share episode, I'm very excited to have Sharon Jeffers here with me on the show. Sharon has exploring has been exploring numerology and astrology for more than 30 years, is the author of multiple books, including Cards of Destiny and Love and Destiny, which explore utilizing the 52 playing cards as a divination modality. Uh, super excited to dive in with you. Hello, Sharon. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hi, Brandon. It's so nice to meet you. So Thank nice you for having me. So nice to meet you, too. And I feel like... Uh, the fates have aligned us here. I, I originally came across your books and the, the one store that is responsible for getting them out to the world that happened to be walking distance uh, from my old house prior to the Mystic Manor, which most listeners know about um, <laughs> here in Venice. But yeah, that, that is in Costa Mesa, the store. And I've loved those books. And my partner has went really deep, you know, pretty deep, not as deep as you, but pretty deep into exploring, um, you know, cards of destiny and, and using the 52 playing cards, uh, you know, as a divination modality. And uh, so I had the thought, man, it would be wonderful to have Sharon on the show. I was so glad you're willing to come on and, 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 and share this and talk about this uh, very interesting, um, you know, modality. And with that being said, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I would like to start with, uh, before we kick this off fully, with my cliche opening question, Sharon, and it is this. <laughs> You're in an elevator. The woman next to you looks over, says, what's your passion? You have 10 floors to answer. What do you say? My passion is life and love. And my work is with the cards because they reveal to people who they really are. They acknowledge us and give us permission to acknowledge who we really are. Mm, yeah. I remember, I remember when my, my friend that originally told me about the cards, um, kind of brought it up to me. He was saying in his experience, looking at, you know, different modalities, he thought they were the most accurate, you know, um, way to sort of get insight. And obviously there's many paths, I'm sure you would agree, but, uh, you know, and obviously it's one that really resonates with you. So maybe you can, you know, start off by sharing a little bit of your backstory, whatever feels relevant to share, and then we'll, we'll dive into, to your work. I think, you know, I, I came across a book in 1990 that was written in 1947 by mm. two numerologists. And that book is called Sacred Symbols of the Ancients. Mm. And I, I was actually in a health food store in the San Fernando Valley, and there was a metaphysical store next door at the time. And I felt there's something over there for me. I have to go look. And I looked everywhere. I didn't see what it was. And I was about to leave. I actually had my hand on the door. 
And I turned around and looked up and I saw this book with the symbols, the four pips of the playing card deck, the heart, the club, the diamond and the spade. And it said sacred symbols of the ancients. And it was actually uh, not a coil bound book, but it was bound with the plastic thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I said, oh, there you are. And I took it home and I started reading it. And, you know, in 1947, the language was a little different, how we yeah. use language. But first of all, I felt like I already knew this. Mm. It was like reuniting with an old friend. And secondly, it was so accurate. And so that began my journey in 1990 with this oracle. Mm. I, you know, I was... Um, I've always been intuitive, well, psychic, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I started studying numerology and astrology when I was like 12 years old. Wow. When I was eight, my father bought me a telescope and I spent every night on the roof. <laughs> I think <laughs> I was looking for my, where did I come from? Yeah, Where's yeah. There, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But so I started working with the cards. I mean, at the time I had a very big practice as an applied kinesiologist and I was doing transformational work with people. And so um, I just brought the cards in, in the background, right? Mm -hmm. And I was also doing black hat feng shui at the time and I still do that. But I started seeing the value in you know people being able to acknowledge themselves and then i had the worst tragedy a person can possibly have uh when i was uh my son my oldest son was killed in a car accident in 1997 oh, oh wow and so that took me to Kauai, where i someone gave me a place on the beach and to live and i just sat there looking out the window wondering what now yeah i mean fortunately i have another son so i wasn't going anywhere um so i suddenly started writing about the cards wow and the the direction i got internally was to write in a way that people will want to read about other people, not just themselves. Ah. So I was experiencing a very strong connection with the Order of the Magi in the astral plane, actually. And I wasn't very much on the earth anyway, because my son had left, you know what right, I mean? Right, so right. it's like, I, I wrote like that and I thought about children and I thought about how we all need to understand one another so that we can be curious and compassionate rather than perhaps judgmental at times and right. or even uncertain about who we are. I, I published a book in June. I published two books in June this past June. And one of them, Spirit Cards, is about our inner cards because the cards of destiny have been based on the birth card. Mm -hmm. But who we really are are our inner soul cards. And that spirit card is so important because we know that part of ourselves, but not everyone else sees that. So I was inspired to write that book, and we can talk more about that later if you want. So I started writing and I, just to keep my feet on the per planet, you know, and um, I'd write like 14 hours a day about the cards. And then I was going online and going all over the world, buying old playing cards. And I made a little uh, calendar book, like an engagement calendar. And on the left side, there was an image of an old playing card and the description of the birth card. And then on the right side, the seven days of the week. So you could use it like a calendar mm -hmm. and all my friends 
wanted them. Mm. So I would make that. I made it for me, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and but people would come over and they would say they would want to read the other cards, not yeah. just the card. And I thought, oh, good, you know, yeah. I got it, you know. And then a literary agent was at somebody's house, one of my friends who had my book. And um, he's actually Eckhart Tolle's um, literary. This was in 2006. Hold on. What is his name? 2005. Bill Gladstone. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so a little synchronicity. He was just on the show a couple oh, well, of weeks Oh, well, Bill ago. used to be my <laughs> literary agent. Wow, what a what well, an that interesting was back in two in like well my book came out in two thousand six, so probably two thousand five. Mm -hmm. My first book came out in two thousand six. It's really an interesting synchronicity because I almost didn't have him on because there were some challenges getting him um uh, you know, set up and using the technology and you know, there was a couple hiccups and I was like, Yeah, and, and I, I decided let's just do it anyway. Uh, I kind of, I had this decision moment, uh, and it's so funny because now there's been, you know, I'm, I'm, I wrote a book that I'm talking about possibly doing another edition with, and he's like, oh yeah, I'll help you with that. And, you know, then it was like, oh, you know, I can probably get anyone on the show you'd want that's I've worked with like Neil Donald Walsh, who's like an Eckhart Tolle. I mean, Neil is like one of my, that book influenced me the most probably in the mid nineties. And so I just booked him for the first of the year because of Bill Gladstone. So it's really interesting that you're connected to him too, because I literally almost didn't uh, have him on because of some of the challenges. And I, but I've seen it enough where it's like, if there's challenges getting a podcast booking or we have to reschedule or something, a lot of times I end up being really great. And uh, uh -huh. so anyway, I think that's, that's funny. I had no idea that you're connected to him too. No, I understand that because, well, yes, I am. And well, he called me on a Sunday morning. He was at that time his girlfriend's house, who is now his wife. And I had given her one of the books because she was my friend. And he called me and said, I just read these people and those people and this, but I want to get you published. And mm. I'm like, who are you? What? Yeah. Right. <laughs> because I was just doing that to survive. Yeah. Right. Honestly, you know, right, it right. was. Um, so, yeah, he got my first book published. And wow. um, and I think my second one as well, um, mm. Love and Destiny, the Secret Language of Relationships. Right, where you put the cards together. And then together. the first one actually got published in Japan as well. Hmm, interesting. But that was, you know, the 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 Japanese publisher came to me and then I sent them to Bill. But yeah, I'm not surprised at the synchronicity. You, of course, That's the what threads it's been of the connectivity. Whole time for me. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I never thought about being published and I ended up with three publishers. Wow. <laughs> wow. So now that was a long time ago. Publishing was different. You know, it's yeah. changed a lot because of self-publishing. And yeah. my last two books, I self-published. Right, right. Well, I'd love to, you know, if you would share a little bit for those who are not, you know, um, aware at all about, uh, you know, the cards and just, you know, your high level history and how how you know they're used well the cards in the calendar have a beautiful relationship <laughs> because there are 52 weeks in the year and there are 52 cards in the deck there are four seasons and there are four suits the hearts the clubs the diamonds and the spades in each suit, there are 13 cards, ace through king. And in each of the seasons that we have, there are 13 weeks. Mm. And of course, there are 13 lunar cycles in the year. 
Yeah, it's actually 1328. Someone was just telling me about this. And I, and in it, you know, instead, you, you know, we're used to 28 days. Yeah. Um, and as opposed to we're, we're kind of operating on 12 months, right. And 30, 31 days. And, um, it's, I, I, it made me remember, this was just like a month ago. I'm like, oh, wow, that was my address growing up, 1328, my very first address. So that I recall <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> oh God, I had a synchronistic experience like this in Las Vegas last week. And it was anyway, um, yeah, with my childhood address. That's wow. amazing. Interesting. And it went beyond that, of course. So, um, when you add the card deck up by the numeric value of each card, it's 364. And when you add the Joker, it's 365. Right. And the Joker is, there's one birthday, it's December 31st. So each day of the year is associated with a card in the deck. And that card is the beginning of a 13 card life path that you have mm. now in reference to the lunar cycles the 13 28 day cycles in the year we have those in the cards so when i do a reading for somebody i don't lay cards out like fortune teller i'm reading charts there are 91 spreads that are made up of 52 cards and they have planetary influences. And um, it's, it's very simple and it's as complex as you want to experience. Um, it's mm. so deep. And one of the things that I teach my students after they've taken my beginning level class is I teach them about the lunar cycles. Because if I were to do a reading for you, I would look at your seven-year cycle, which by the way, you're in the last year of the seven-year cycle mm. that you started seven years ago. Interesting. So when you have your next birthday, you're going into a new seven-year cycle. And often when I bring this to people's attention, they are like, oh my God, my life changed completely when I turned that age, you know? Yeah. So I look at your seven-year cycle, your four-year cycle, your one-year cycle. Within your one-year cycle, there are seven 52-day planetary periods, and there are four seasonal cycles. So all these charts, so it's like, it's telling a story and how you know, time unfolds before us as we're moving through this matrix of time. This oracle is the matrix of time. Mm. And as you said earlier, you know, all the oracles, astrology, numerology, Vedic astrology, all these different oracles that we have or timekeeping systems are extremely accurate. Personally, I think this one is gets closest to home because we can look at the 28-day lunar cycles that are happening and they reveal how you feel, what's going on in your subconscious, who's coming into your life. You know, I mean, this system's amazing and mm. it's definitely my passion. Yeah. What is the history <laughs> Um, obviously Sharon, <laughs> what is the, uh, what is the history of the destiny cards? They, they, you know, they predate Tarot, correct? I believe they do. And I'll tell you why. Um, because I once about 20 years ago saw a, um, a calendar from, it looked like medieval time and it stated that. And this was when the internet, you know, this is before now you don't know what's real and what's not. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, the whole thing is an illusion anyway. So let's just have fun. <laughs> but, you know, it's like um, that calendar was made up of just the pips 
like there were two hearts on the two hearts day and there were 10 clubs on the 10 of clubs day and that's all the calendar oh month. wow and so i don't know there are many stories you know and there are many arguments i mean people sure. who are dedicated to tarot believe that is the oldest form mm, gotcha there is there are indications that there were 52 cards in the beginning and then the major arcana was added on so to me it doesn't really matter because the accuracy of this system yeah. is so mind-blowing that what results it does it get right 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 i mean i'm not sure any history is quite accurate at this point so yeah right that's a good point um and it's really fascinating you know i think of it in terms of you know a lot of people are most familiar with like you know, astrological signs, right? You'll be one in 12. Uh, I'm a Leo. Like, uh, easy, I'm going to come across with many other Leos as one in 12. Well, you know, with, with this, it's like it's a little more detailed and there's 52 possibilities, right? Yes, but you meet your spirit card and your soul card. Yeah. You love your Venus card. You mm. feel sexually attracted to your Mars card. Mm. You're sometimes intimidated by your Saturn card, mm. maybe your Uranus card, because we have all these cards in our life path. So astrology plays a strong role in this. Right. And it would have to because we're living in a solar system. Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. So sure. according to your astrological sign, that will be the determining factor of what your planetary ruling card is like you're mm. the king of hearts mm -hmm. and for leo in the cards we look at the uranus card in your mm. life path mm -hmm. for your planetary ruler so your birth card which is the day you're born the month and day you're born that card you know represents a, you know, the costume you're wearing to the ball. And it is <laughs> like the sun in the solar system of your life path. Right. It's who you came to be in this life, but who you really are hmm. and where you came from are your inner soul cards. Hmm. Now, you know, there are other teachers that have taught that those are called karma cards. Right. I believe all the cards are karma cards, gotcha. but in our life path, I mean, because, you know, the first 44 years of our life, we're, you know, taking care of business. So it's like, we have a soul card, which represents where we came from and mm -hmm. what we brought into this life with us, the wisdom mm. we already know. Uh -huh. And then we have a spirit card. It's who we are inside, our psyche, who we know ourselves to be. And mm -hmm. that card wants to be expressed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are only seeing how we show up in our birth card and how we interface with the world around us with our through our planetary ruling card and our mm -hmm. astrological sign. So... Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. And mm. that's why I wrote the book Spirit Cards, because. You think oh they deserve God. as much you know, as much we, what? as they deserve as much um, analysis and respect as the 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 main birth card, if not more, more. Right. I don't uh, it's if mine, not more. Is mine like a two? I feel like mine's like a two. Of something your spirit card is the two of clubs which is yeah. the card of communication mm. that card has the power of the magician to mm. use communication to create harmony or conflict and mm. you're creating harmony and you're communicating most of the time <laughs> Well, and this yeah, is I am. I'm you, kidding. <laughs> you know, you're 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 well. You know, we're all human. When, <laughs> or we appear to be anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. So your planetary ruling card. I know Leo is governed by the Sun. However, in the cards, Uranus is the higher octave of the Sun. Ah. And in, if you 
study this, anybody that's questioning this right now, you'll see it's true. And who, who informed me of this was Thomas Morell, who is also a king of hearts like you, ah. um, many, many years ago, back in the 90s. And um, he's an amazing guy. And, you know, when he did, I, because previous to that, the teachings that were going on would say that the, you're a, if you're a Leo, you're a double birth card and it's not true. Mm. And for people then who look at their Uranus card and go, oh my God, this is how I show up and interface with the world. So your planetary ruling card is the eight of clubs. This is a very powerful fixed card. And clubs govern, you know, communication and influence. Your clubs are the information gatherers. So your spirit card's a club and your planetary ruler is a club. So that spirit card is like, this is who I am. I'm going to get in this vehicle which is that eight of clubs and i'm mm. going to ride my magic carpet because it is a <laughs> neptune uh, <laughs> and spread the word and yeah. you know neptune governs spirituality so i don't want to get too carried away here it's very easy mm. for me and then mm. people are like what the heck is she <laughs> no <laughs> i think it's fascinating and i think most of the people listening to this particular podcast will find it fasc fascinating so you don't have to worry too much about that here i don't think you know i love being able i love doing readings for people and i love it i you know i do my work in many many ways and mm. um, I'm going to tell you a quick story. I love stories. When I was in Hawaii, uh, I, I did pro bono work with kids at risk and prison inmates because wow. my son had died. So I wasn't living in the same world as most people. And sure. what I noticed was kids at risk, and I had worked with them before in my other practice, but kids at risk and prison inmates knew something was wrong. Everybody else was just going along doing the thing, you know, and mm -hmm. so I could relate to them more. And so one of the counselors at the school asked me to come to the school where these local boys and one girl I didn't meet her, but where they went to school because they could not handle being in the regular school system. Some of them were homeless. Some just slept on their grandma's couch, but they were very rebellious and they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't sit in class, but they were given a space to go. And there were 15 of them. So I went, and when I walked in the room, they all walked out. You know, they're all local boys, and here I am, this Howley woman. What's she doing here? <laughs> sure. And so they were out playing with this punching bag, and there was a big lanai and some, um, uh, what do you call it? picnic tables? And so mm -hmm. I just went and I sat with my back to them, and. One of them walked by me and I said, aloha. And he said, mm. you know, aloha. <laughs> and, and I said, do you play cards? And he said, what? And I said, do you play cards? <laughs> and he said, sometimes. I said, when's your birthday? And he oh, told me. Got and him. He was, <laughs> the two of clubs. Oh, and wow. I said, oh, and I just started talking to him. And he sat down. I and one by one they came and then they sat in a big circle around me wow. and I took, I, I had my little coil bound book at the time. This is a long time ago. Yeah. And I read to them each of their birthday descriptions. And then I shared with them what happens to them when they're challenged. Ooh. And they were like with each other. Oh, bra, that's totally you. Wow. You know, and that's right. me. Oh my God. Yeah. They sat with me for over an hour and a half. Wow. 
And then they asked me if I would come back because they wanted to bring their friend. Aww. And they wanted me to do a reading for him because they were afraid he was going to kill himself. Wow. A week later, I got a call from the high school principal. And she said, I want to give you a job. I said, what? She said, I want you to be the teacher at that school. I said, I don't have any teaching credentials. <laughs> she said, I don't care. You have something. Those kids have never sat in a room for more than five minutes with anybody. Wow. It wasn't me. It was yeah. this oracle. Yeah. Because it speaks to who we are. And yeah. that's why I do everything I do. It's not for money. It's a, even though I, you know, I do need to make money in this. Of course, world we do here. still live and in a, in a I don't do monetary for, system. That's, you know, I've created all these. I have to literally stop myself from creating more things. You know, <laughs> my you. spirit card is the card of creativity. So mm. it's like. You know, it's a way for people to understand each other, their lovers, their yeah, partners, yeah. their children, their parents, mm -hmm. you know, and it really is so simple on that plane. Yeah. And so profound at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. It really, it, it, it reminds me, you know, my partner I mentioned earlier is, um, really taken to the cards and wanting to learn more. And, um, and she has had a similar, she, she's a speech therapist and, and works with children who, oh. you know, have emotional disturbances. So a lot of times she would go, um, you know, go to work and it's sort of like, you know, these kids that, you know, she'll say, hey, look, if this was 200 years ago, they'd be in an insane asylum kind of thing, you know, either autism or their parents are gangbangers and they're, you know, getting in trouble and in and out of jail. And, and she has, uh, really ha found a way to connect with them, you know, more, way better than most. And, and I think she has even in, talked a little bit with a few of them about the cards as she's, you know, been learning herself. So I thought that was a really interesting parallel, um, there. So, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I had a friend, uh, when I was in Kauai who taught at a private school mm -hmm. and when she would write up the reports for the kids, she'd mm -hmm. take the birthday description out of the book mm -hmm. and she would, you know, work it into the report for the parents about mm -hmm. their kid and who they were and what they needed. Wow. I mean, wow. I have a book. This should be my next book. Mm -hmm. it's about kids in the cards uh, uh, that's the yeah. title actually and you know it's, it's a guide for parents and caretakers of kids and teachers because we don't always see who's on the inside and and because of that you know I mean I'm sure everybody's had this experience where you you know yourself to be somebody else other than what people see you as. Mm -hmm. People see you as your birth card and your spirit card and your astrological sign. Yep. But your spirit card is who you're living with inside and your soul card, which is the wisdom you brought into the life. So, and your soul card is the nine of spades, which is, mm -hmm the card of spiritual initiation death and rebirth mm. Mm. you know recreation and regeneration it's a very powerful card the nine of spades i did, i wasn't aware of that one that's my soul card you said yes interesting very interesting yes um, it's you know so in the book i wrote spirit cards i have the main body of work is about your spirit card birth based on your birthday. Then I have the birth card description, and then I have a message from your soul card. Ooh. <laughs> I had to put that in there. You know, this is in your like, new book, the spirit card book. 
Yeah, the spirit card book. Okay, got yeah. it. It's that, you know, I had to put that. This is a message from your soul card. It's very simple, but it goes right to the point because. Is it short we, to read? Could could I could I hear mine or is it long, is it lengthy and I should just go get the book and check it you out? You can hear yours. Okay. All right. Before we continue on with today's episode, I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about a podcast that is focused on answering the big questions in life called Stories of Impact. Did you know that there are researchers out there working daily to discover scientific evidence about how you can flourish? Join Tavia Gilbert as she shares and connects with compelling stories all about the ongoing scientific exploration of how to live better and shares key discoveries of research grantees from the Templeton World Charity Foundation. I listened to an episode with Deepak Chopra where he discusses how human flourishing is intimately tied into our ability to tap into the flow state, which really resonates with me. As you know, if you have read my book, I wholeheartedly believe in the importance of focusing our flow. So to continue improving your physical and mental health, tune into new episodes the first and third Tuesday of the month by subscribing and listening wherever you get your podcast. And be sure to check out storiesofimpact.org. Okay, so your soul card is the nine of spades. Okay. This card represents the gifts you brought with you into this life. Mm. Your innate knowing. Your soul card reveals your direction in this life. The card of reinvention and recreation, letting go is often the order of business. Personal and spiritual initiation is mm. on the table always. Mm. This is a highly creative influence and one with great sensitivity. However, often you are asked to let go of that which you no longer need. Mm. If you choose to ignore that call, things can be taken. The purpose of the endings is to create the space for new beginnings. And this energy desires to constantly regenerate itself in higher forms. Mm. This is a powerful influence of death and rebirth, rejuvenation and reinvention. It serves you beyond measure to pay attention to life and how things change. Embrace the unknown as the unknown is actually your friend. <laughs> the nine huh. of spades is a universal influence and therefore somewhat impersonal. Then I put a quote here by Mer Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. <laughs> you're not here to be normal. Oh, okay. That's working out. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. So thank you for sharing that. So the other aspect of that card, because it governs you in your work, this mm -hmm. is the key, you know, uh, element to this is through your work, you're feeding that spiritual body of knowledge that's universal, which is the nine of spades. Mm. And that's your destiny. Feels about right. Yeah. Definitely, definitely has been a huge part of my journey is, you know, the mysteries and share, obviously, I mean, this podcast has 1800 episodes or so at this point. So, you know, definitely a big part of my, my journey. There you are, your soul card for all of us, our soul card for you, the nine of spades. That's a card of spiritual initiation. It's a card of you know, it's a universal influence. So it's not about you. It's about all of us. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Our soul card wants to express itself through our spirit card. Yours is a card of communication. Yeah. And, and then be carried by that king of hearts who is the master of love and compassion. Mm. 
And then how you interact with the world around you is through your Eight of Clubs planetary ruling card, mm. which is a powerful card of communication and manifestation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when people, you know, I've actually thought about doing recordings of life paths for people. Ah. So if you have this birthday, you could, but that's a lot of work. Probably what mm. I need is somebody that's a programmer to do something. But anyway, you audio know, engineer. Yeah. Yeah. An editor. Right. Hmm. Something to think about. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'd like to go on a vacation, but I'm always <laughs> trapping myself in some fabulous <laughs> creative project. Um, you know, it, it's like understanding this. I call the birth card and the two inner soul cards, spirit and soul our cosmic egg, you know, it's like a cosmic ah. egg of who we really are. And sure. then it's carried in the, you know, carriage or the magic carpet of our planetary ruler. Who's like, let's do this. Let's go this way. Mm -hmm. Let's manifest in this manner. I mean, it's really amazing how intricate you can get. And then when it comes to relationships, it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's a whole thing in itself, right? Because essentially what you do with uh, relationships is you pair two cards together and then you get a third card, right? Um, yes. So and then that sort of gives you all the insight into that that match. That and card is governing the, the relationship. Mm hmm. And you can also do your spirit cards, your soul cards, and your planetary ruling card. But that birth card determines the life path of the mm -hmm. relationship. Right. And it's, I think it's I feel so like mine was heaven. I feel like mine's title. Well, my partner is a seven of clubs, October 15th. And I feel uh -huh. like um, if I recall, it was like heaven meets earth is the title. But that yeah, you, you have a seven of diamonds relationship. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, that's a card that brings spirit and matter, heaven and earth. It's strong. It's totally, it's the Venus card in the Venus position of the life path. Mm. Where I live in Mexico, San Miguel de Allende is governed by name by the seven of diamonds. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> the... Feminine influence there is off the charts, mm. both locally and with foreigners who have mm -hmm. moved there. Mm -hmm. The town is built atop a giant bed of quartz crystals. Wow. Not quartz rocks, but crystals. Wow. And it is a portal. It's amazing. Sounds like it. Wow. Yeah. So because, you know, that, so that life path of um, the, the seven of diamonds has the nine of spades, your soul card as the Jupiter card. So mm. it's, if you have to be on a spiritual path together in that relationship, your values have to align. You know, the four suits represent the four aspects of the human experience. And I remember the day I realized this because nobody had talked about this. Mm. And I Could didn't you share what those study. are too? Huh? Could you share what those four aspects are as well? Yeah, I was just going to do that. Oh. Um, <laughs> sorry. Read your mind. Keeping me on track. <laughs> um, so... We, we are emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual beings. Right. The heart suit governs the emotional realm. The club suit governs the mental realm. The diamond suit governs the physical realm. And the spade suit governs the spiritual realm. 
And when the heart energy is exalted, we know compassion. And when the club suit is exalted, we have understanding. And when the diamond suit is realized, we have integrity. Mm. And when the spade suit is exalted, we express wisdom. We live in our wisdom. Mm. So the four exalted expressions of emotion, the emotional realm, the mental realm, the physical realm, and the spiritual realm are compassion, understanding, integrity, and wisdom. Mm. Beautiful. Yes. I'm the king of diamonds. <laughs> oh, okay. You're king so. of hearts and my king of diamonds sit side by side in the life paths. So there's always like this immediate connection, right? Amazing. And we'll probably stay connected now for the rest of our lives or whatever. I hope so. Yeah. Um, so because those side by side relationships, whatever the cards may be, it could be a spirit card and a birth card. These are people that stay friends for life or married for life. It's very interesting. You know, I've been working with this oracle for over 30 years. So mm -hmm. I've come up across a lot and have a lot of like family and relationship and friends, uh, you know, a, a little uh, queen of hearts. I bump up against quite a bit for example. Me too. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Me too. A... Queen of hearts are very much in my life. And then if your spirit card and your soul card, it, there aren't many birthdays for my seven of spades soul card. Mm -hmm. And when I run into these people, I'm like a devotee at the feet of the guru. I mean, oh. I just pay really close attention wow. to them. Interesting. Yeah. Am I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say my that that makes me think of my my son's card. I think there's very few uh, birthdays that have it, uh, which is six of hearts. Oh, and that's your Venus card. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. So that makes sense because he's definitely like you know, the love of my life. Right. So, uh -huh. um, in one, in, from, in one respect. So, um, interesting. Wow. I didn't realize that. That's very sweet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I literally, it makes me think I literally had a dream last night about, you know, he's grown up now, um, in his early twenties and, um, and I had a dream last night, it made me think of it, just talking about it right now, where I was like holding some other kid's little boy. It was like four or three, maybe. And and then getting really emotional, like, oh, my son will never be like this again, you know, in the dream. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it just made me just talking about it right now made me remember that I had had that last night. And, you know, it was like, yeah, I know I would do that part over and over and over. Yeah. I know. So huh? sweet. Oh, wow. Very, very interesting. So you are, you now your, your two newest, I, I came across your work originally with Love and Destiny and Cards of Destiny, which they're mm -hmm. out of print now. Is that? No, is that... Love and Destiny. There's lots of them. Okay. Um, Cards of Destiny has been out of print for a bit and I have the publishing rights. Um, it has, you know, it's just, it went out of print during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And that book was printed in China. You can't get a full color hardcover book printed here without having I... to charge an arm and a leg for it then. I see. You know, I see. it's pretty expensive. Although Amazon has that now. And I was thinking about looking to see what would be possible but um the spirit card book well i published two books in june and mm -hmm. one is called the keys to your kingdom it's over mm -hmm. 200 pages and it's eight and a half by 11 mm. and it's a daily guide for our journey through time cool. from uh, june 22 to may 22 and this book both these books have been selling like hotcakes on both Amazon and my website. And 
I just did the, I've been doing the card of the day for 20 years. I think mm -hmm. I did the original card of the day. Now everybody does the card of the day, which is great because they're all different. <laughs> but um, I started doing the card of the day and, you know, I have thousands of people on my email list. And, and then I thought, you know, I, I want to do a book so people can plan ahead. Mm hmm. Because that was my very original reason for doing my little coil bound book. It was like, for me, it's like, I want to mm. look ahead and see what's going on. Sure. So in this book, I have the card of the day for every day. And um, in the keys also, to your kingdom, the keys to your kingdom. And it, daily now, is, guide now, is that just kingdom. for our current year? Then this is a book it's that for sort the of expires current year because. I put void, of course, moon in there. I put a lot of extra things in there so that. Interesting. So you'll do a new one each year, maybe? or Yeah, I'm going to do uh, a new one. Cool. That's and, an interesting And this one, approach. you know, the regular price is $39, but because we're halfway through the year, I'm going to lower the price on this. Oh, cool. And I'm going to put this, I have a special website for your listeners. Oh, great. And after we finish our podcast today, I'll add this book with, okay, you know, great, great, a reduced price. But, you know, I have, yeah, little goodies on there, my card deck. And so this book, you know, and people have sent me pictures because I have people that have been, you know, my clients and followers for like over 20 years. Yeah. Wow. And, and so, you know, it's so cool because most of them have readings with me on their birthday every year, but they've been sending me pictures where they're making notes in the book. Cause I also, I also show you in this book how to determine your personal card for the day. And then in the back, I have descriptions of what that means for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Well, we'll, we'll share that uh, where they can get this uh, here in a moment. Uh, and I'll also put it in the link. Yeah, in the show and notes. then the Spirit Cards book, which is also over 200 pages, and also an eight and a half by 11 book. Mm. I like things, I like, I'm very kinesthetic. So things have to feel good to me also. I'm, they I'm with you. have to be beautiful that. and feel good. I'm with you. <laughs> and this is, um, you know, yeah, I love this book. It's so cool. I love both these books. I hadn't written anything for seven years except my card deck. And suddenly I just got, got a little bug in my bonnet and wrote two books. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and Amazing. published them both at the same time. Very, very cool. Well, um, so uh, before, as we kind of start winding down some here, um, I would like to take you down um, the story time path. <laughs> I, as the listeners know, I love to hear any stories of synchronicity or serendipity or positive paranormal stories. And, um, yeah, just curious if you have anything, uh, up, up your sleeve to share. I, I have a story I want to share that just happened in Las Vegas last weekend. Okay. Fine. And, like and it's fresh. not about the cards, but I'm a medium, right? And, and oh, really, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I'm a medium and, um, you know, that kicked into place big time after my son died, mm. but that's another story. So I have some clients in Kauai and she had a reading with me a month ago. I was in Mexico. I was supposed to be in Mexico today, but anyway, she said, are you going to be in L.A.? Because we're going to be in Vegas. Will you come see us? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, if I'm there, I will. Well, then she called me two weeks ago or a week and a half ago or something. I don't know. And she said, we're going to be in Vegas on these days. And she said, will you come? Are you in LA? And I said, I am in LA. And it was kind of inconvenient, the timing, but I had told her I would come. So they bought airline tickets and a room for me so I could come and spend the day and the night there. And, 
And well, they didn't buy the room yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm having, actually, I was only going to go for the day. Okay, mm -hmm. let me get my story straight here. I was only going to go for the day. And anyway, we're having lunch and, and they said, will you spend the night and then we can go gamble tonight and have fun <laughs> and they like to gamble and yeah. And and I said, okay, but I'm going to have to get a room. And he said, no, I'm going to get you a room. And did so you calls, play card? Did you play cards gambling? No, she likes <laughs> it. Too, so I just hung out with her. <laughs> no, but I, nothing pleases my ears more than to be in a poker room. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, we, he calls the Paris and they said, okay, well, you need to bring your credit card over. So we finish lunch and we go over there. There are 50 people in line to check in. These guys are older. And I said, let's not do this. Let's not mm. do this right now because look at how long this line is. He's like, no, 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 we, we're going to do this. So we're in line and we're talking and catching up on this and that and the other thing. And and then we get up to the counter and I'm like, I only had a backpack with me. So I'm down on the bottom of my little backpack looking for my license. And I stand up and I look at this girl and all of a sudden this love just rushes through my body and I want to hug her. Wow. And I'm like, I'm almost tearful because of how powerful this is. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I said, I know you. And she looked at me like she was seeing a ghost. Wow. And I said, why, where do I know you from? I know you. And I was just like oozing over the counter, you know? Yeah. And she looked down at my license and she looked up at me and she said, you look just like my mother and my mother died a year ago. Whoa. And, and she said, and you were born the same year as my mother. Wow. And she, tears just started running down her face. And she said, wow. your eyes are my mother's eyes. Whoa. And I could just feel her mother loving her and I was wow. crying and she was crying. And the two friends of mine were like, they were just like, oh my God, because she, she's my clients had mediumship readings with me and so right you know it, it was so incredible and just her mother just you know she said I miss you too I know I know you know and and um she looked at me and she goes I don't usually cry when I check people in <laughs> yeah right and not standard operating and I <laughs> said, procedure no it's not I said, you have no idea what has happened for me and you to be standing here right now. The timing yeah. of that. Yeah, right. And I was like buzzing for hours just thinking about, you know, the phone call and the, you know, them flying me because I usually I prefer to drive to Vegas. It's easier than flying. And, you know, and the fact of when he called and when we got in line and how we ended up at her, there were a lot of agents at that counter, you know, Yeah, right. for people, you know, checking people right. in. So because that just happened and, you know, sometimes we question what's going on in life, but when we pay attention the magic is always working. It's always at work. Yeah. And for me, that's that's where I want to live. I want to live in the magic. So, you know, bring I me see with that you. Little bird when it lands in front of me, or that butterfly when it goes yeah. by. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely do. And uh, yeah, you're definitely bringing the magic, Sharon. So. I'm grateful for you. And thank you for sharing this story. That's a beautiful one. Thank you for allowing me to course, share that course. story. Well, what, so let's, let's share with people, um, the best way, uh, for, to, to contact you and, you know, to get your latest books and whatever, you know, maybe you can just take a moment and 
and tell people how to, yeah, connect and, and follow. Okay, so your work. my website, my main website is it's all in the cards.com. I T S A L L I N T H E C A R D S dot com. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all in the cards.com. And, you know, my two, well, my second greeting card line isn't quite up there yet. I'm waiting for the store that does my online sales to get my cards up there. Um, my original greeting card line is on there, my books. You can sign up for my card of the day there. Mm. For your listeners, and the card of the day is free. For your listeners, the website to go to. And this is heavily influenced by the fact that I've been living in Mexico for 11 years. <laughs> Sharon Jeffers dot big cartel dot com. I knew you were running the cartel, Sharon. I could just tell. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, Sharon Jeffers dot big cartel dot com. So for your listeners, I have some special offers there and everything is free shipping. And there's one great. digital product of me talking about the cards. And oh, then I have great. some um, art that I'm going to be uploading there that is from my card deck. But the art I have printed and for each of the cards. And then they've been embellished uh, with Swarovski crystals. They're really mm. cool and matted. So, you know, I have one example on there and then I'm going to upload the rest of them this week. Great. And that'll great. be a special for your guys too, if they want them anyway. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. And then, um, as far as, uh, the spirit cards book, that'll be, uh, there. And then also the keys to your kingdom book. Will that be there as well? The, the two newest ones, the keys, the spirit card book is there. Now the keys to your kingdom will be there okay. at a, you know, reduced price. And then, Great. um, yeah. And the card deck, my Great. card deck. Very cool. Well, this has been awesome. Sharon, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom. I know there will be, uh, a lot of people grateful and wanting to continue to check out your your work. I'll put I'll put the link um, to um, yeah the the big cartel link uh, sharingjeffers.bigcartel.com link below. You guys can click it there, and then uh, it's also it's all in the cards as your other main site. So um, yeah, because love and destiny is on that, and okay. also people can sign up for free for the card of the day if they want. Got it. That in Got their it. email box. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll make this a note of this. This has been amazing. Oh, I know. Brandon, of course. I just, yeah, this has been really fun. Thank you it so much. It sure has. And I think uh, the cards, you knew it from the beginning that we would get along, right? Um, yep. As you said, we, <laughs> we sit next to one another and uh, I am uh, grateful to have had the chance to do it again here. And yeah, when you're in, in LA, uh, let me know. Uh, we do a, We do gatherings, you know. Um, I'm in uh, LA right now. So oh, until great. probably the 12th of December. Oh, okay. So we're going to do like a, a, a marketplace thing on the 10th. Uh, we call it mystic marketplace where it's like all kinds of vendors are, um, yeah, offering their, their wares. And a lot of people in the transformational kind of conscious community that we know have make clothes and jewelry and so who knows maybe well if maybe it even aligned for you to come and be a part of that in some way so we can talk about that off off okay. off this podcast and um yeah all of you out there for listening um thank you as always for tuning your beautiful brain waves and incredible hearts into another episode and until next time journey well <laughs>